Welcome, masters, to CCC Children Building. Children Building. CCC Book Club. Mm. Can I share my screen? Okay. Um, is my screen out of, um, can you see my screen? Yes, Joshua. Should I start from here? I think uh, we um no I think we left the um chapter ten. No 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 more than that more than that. What page? Uh, I just keep going. Do you think it's no, more? I think hundred and five. Hmm? Have you read this part? Yeah, I think um, let's read for 102. Mm, okay. Wait, I think it's actually 103. Huh? Mm, yeah. Let's start at this part. In one hundred two, at frequent intervals, we had service for guiding the ghosts. Death was no teller for Tibetans, but we believe that one can have an easier passage from this life to a certain if certain precautions are taken. It is necessary to follow clearly defined paths and to think along certain lines. A service would be conducted in a temple, in a temple with 300 monks present. In the center of the temple, there would be a group of perhaps five telepathic lamas sitting sitting circle face to face. As the monks led by an abbot chanted, chanted the lamas would try and gain telepathic contact with distressed souls. No translation from Tibetan prayers can do full justice to them. But this is an attempt. Hear the voices of our souls. All you who wander unguided in the borderlands, the living and the dead, live in worlds apart. Where can their faces be seen and their voices be heard? Voices heard. The first of incense, incense, incense is to light the summon to li is lit to summon a wandering ghost so that they he may be guiding, guided. Hear the voices of our souls, all who wonder this world of illusion, life is but 
a dream. All who that are born must die. Only the way of the Buddha leads to eternal life. The third stick of incense is to lit is lit to summon a wandering ghost that he may be guided. Hear the voices of our souls. All you of great power, you who have in been enthroned with mountains and rivers under your rule, your veins have lasted but a moment, and the complaints of your people have never ceased. The earth runs with blood, the leaves of trees swayed by the size of a crust. The fourth stick of incense is still is lit to summon the ghosts of king and dictators that they may be guarded, guided. Hear the voices of our souls, all you warriors who have invaded, wandered, and killed. Where are your armies now? The earth groans, weeds go all over the battlefield. The fifth stick of incense is to light lonely souls of generals and lords for guidance. Hear the voices of our souls, all artists and scholars, you who have trained at painting, writing in vain, you have strained your sight, worn down your ink slabs. Nothing of you is remembered. Your, and your soul must continue on. The sick, sick of incense is lit to summon ghosts of artists and schoolers. Hear the voices of our souls, beautiful virgins and ladies of high degree, whose youth can be compared to a fresh spring in the morning. After the embrace of lovers comes to the breaking of our hearts. The autumn, then the winter comes, trees and flowers fade as to beauty and became and become but skeleton. The sixth day of incense is lit to summon the wandering ghost of Wilkins, ladies of high degree, so they may be guided away from the ties of the world. Heal all the voices. Near the voices of our souls, all beggars and thieves who have committed crimes against others, who now, not now, obtain rest. Your soul wanders friendless in the world. You have not justice with you. The eighth stick of incense is to lit is lit to summon all those ghosts who have sinned and now who now wander alone. Hear the voices of our souls, prostitutes, women of the night. And all who that have sinned against, and now who now wander alone in ghostly lands. The ninth stick of incense is lit to summon them from guidance, that they may be free from the bounds of the world. Let everyone must this. 
It looks like Lobsan is now telling us about a like a play about a playa or something. In the incense laden of dust, temple the flickering butter lamps would cause living shadows to dance behind the golden images. And the air will go tense with the concentration of the telepathic marks so as they strove mate to maintain contact with those who have passed from the world yet still born with it. Blessed robots sitting in lines facing each other would intone the litany of death and hidden drums would beat out the rhythm of the human heart. From, as, from other parts of the temple, as a living body, would come growing the internal organs, the rustling of body feelings, and the slight sighing of airs in the lungs. As the ceremony continued, would dive back to those who had passed as over the tem tempo of the body. Sounds would change, become slow. At last would come to the sound of the spirit leaving the body. The bustling curling gust and silence, silence that, that comes with into the silence would become awareness, discernible this, this to even the last body, is it? That other things were around waiting. Gradually, as the telepathic instruction continued, tension would lessen as the unquiet. It's moved on the next stage of the journey. We believed, we believed, we believe firmly that we are in, we were born time after time, but not merely. There are millions of worlds. We only know most of them are inhabited. Inhabits. Maybe in different forms, we they may be superior to humans. We in Tibet never describe the view that a man is highest. Subscribed the man that is the highest and the most noble form of evolution. We believe that a much higher form, life forms, are found somewhere else, and they do not drop atom bombs. In Tibet, I've seen hordes of strange crafts, the strange craft in the sky, the chariot of gods, of the gods, most people call them. The Lama Mingya Dondup told me that a group of Lamas it established telepathic communication with these gods, who said that they're watching Earth apparently in the same way as humans watch wild, dangerous in animals in a zoo. Much people have written about levitation. It is possible, as I have often seen it, but it takes much practice. There is no real point in, in engaging levitation as there was a far simpler system. Astro traveling is easier. Astro traveling is easier and sure. Most lamas do it. Anyone who's prepared do, do use some patients can include in the useful, the useful and pleasant arts 
During our waking hours on Earth, our ego is confined to the physical body. And uh, unless one is trained, it is not possible to separate them. We sleep, it is only the physical body which needs rest. The spirit disengages itself. And usually the spirit it goes to the spirit plane. In much of the way, same way as a child returns home at the end of a school day, ego and physical bodies maintain contact mean by means of a silk silver cord, which is capable of unlimited extension. The body stays aligned as so. The silver cord is intact. At death, the cord is served as the spirit is born another life. Just as a babel, baby's umbilical cord served to a part from its mother, but to a baby, death is a is a sheltered life. It it is led within the mother's body. Death through the spirit is birth again into the free world of spirit. While the silver cord is intact, the ego is free to roam during sleep or unconsciously in case of those special the roaming of the spirit produces dreams, which are impressions transmitted to the silver cord. As physical minds reach, they are rationalized to fit with one's earth belief. In the spirit, in the world of the spirit, there is no time. Time is a purely physical content. We have cases. Cases cases where long involved dreams seem to occur in a fraction of a second. Probably everyone has had a dream in a which a person far away perhaps across the oceans has met and spoken to. Some messages may be given on one awakening the Usually a strong impression of something that should be remembered. Frequently, there is no memory of meeting a distant friend or relative, and it is no surprise to hear from hear from a person within a very short time. In those who are entwined, the memory is often disordered. And uh, the result is an illogical dream or nightmare. In Tibet, we travel much by astral projection, and not by levitation. And the whole process is within our control. Ego is made to leave the physical body, although still connected to it. By the silver cord, one can travel where one wills, as quickly as one can think. Most people have the ability to engage in astral travel. Much have probably started out being untrained, have experienced a shock. Probably everyone has a sensation of just dipping. Sleep. Then, with the apparent reason being wildly awakened by a sudden powerful jerk, this part this is caused by rapid extiration of the ego, an ungentle starting hurting of physical body and astral body. It causes contraction of the silver cord. 
the and the astral is snatched back into physical vehicle. It is much worse to feel to feel when one has traveled and is returning. Astral is floating many many feet above the body, like a balloon at the end of a string. Sometimes, perhaps sometimes, some external noise causes the astral body to return to the body which excessive rapid, rap, rapid pity. The body awakens suddenly. There's a horrible feeling that one has fallen off a cliff and has just awakened in time. Astral traveling under one's control while fully conscious can be accomplished by almost anyone. It needs patience. But above all that, in early stages, it demands privacy where one cannot be alone, can be alone without the fear of interruption. This is not a textbook of met metaphysics, so there is no point in giving instructions on astral traveling. But it should be emphasized, emphasized that it can be distributing experience unless one has a sustainable future. There are actually no day action danger. But it allows the risk of shocks and emotional disturbances if the astral body is allowed to leave or return to the physical body out of phase or, co or coincidence. People with heart weakness should never practice astral projection. While there is no danger of projection itself, there's grave danger to weak with those with a weak heart. In other, if another person enters a room and disturbs the body of cord, result shock could prefer fatal that can could be, be very inconvenient, such as ego would have to be reborn to finish the particular span of life before it could process. To the next stage. We believe that everyone before this fallen man had ability to travel in astral, see by clay wounds, telepath, and levitate. Our version of the fallen man is abused. The occult powers and use them for self-interest instead of the development of mankind as a whole. In the earliest of days, mankind could converse with mankind by telepathy. Local tribes had their own versions of vocal speech, which they use exclusively among them. The telepathic speech was, of course, by thought and could be understood by all, regardless, regardless of local language. When the power of telepathy was lost, was lost through abuse, there was babble. Daniel was all just do the one. I was having chat. Please explain to me better. Explain once and dance. Hello, this is Dad. We do not have a Sabbath day as such hours, holy days, and as absorbed on the eighth and fifteenth of month of each month. Then there were special services, and the days are regarded as sacred, and no work is normally done 
Our annual feasts, how I had been told, correspond some, somewhat to the Christian festivals. But my thought, no, pledge of letter is quite insufficient for me to comment. Our festivals are the first month. This corresponds roughly to February. More from first day, we or from the third day, we celebrate Logsa. This is in the Western world would be called New Year. It is a great occasion for games such as villagers services. Our greatest community of the of a whole year is held by the fourth to the fifteenth day. These are the days of supplication. Our name for it is Monlan. Monlan. This ceremony is is really the highlight of religious and Specular, secular year. On the 15th day of the same month, we have an anniversary of Buddha's conception. This is not a time for games, but one of the solemn thanksgiving. To complete the month, we have on that 27th, on the 27th, a celebration which is partly religious, partly mythical. It is a procession, a possession of a holy dagger. With that, the events of the first month are ended. The second month, approximately fairly free of the ceremony, is fairly free of ceremony. There's a chase of exploration, exploration of the demon of ill luck. The third month, April, also has few public ceremonies. On the fifth day, there was a anniversary of revelation. Revelation. The exploration, it's like riddance. Procession is like, just getting it. And if there's any other words that you don't get, just ask me. With the arrival of the eighth day of the fourth month, May, May by the Western calendar, we celebrate the anniversary of Buddha's reincarnation of the world. This so far, I understand, is similar to a, to the Christian land. We had to live even more astrally during the days of reincarnation. The 15th day was the day announced of the anniversary of Buddha's death. We regarded the day all those who had left his life. All souls day was another term for it. On, on that day, we burned a stick of incense to call the spirit of those who wandered earthbound. It will understood, be understood that merely, that merely the major festivals there were a minor days which are not to be marked and ceremonies attended, but which are not of sufficient importance to enumerate here. June was the month when on the fifth day, we medical lovers had to attend special ceremonies at other lamaseries the celebrations with thanks of ministrations of medical monks 
of which Buddha was a founder. On that day, we would do, do no wrong. But on the day after, we were certainly called to account for super superiors imagine we had done. Anniversary of Buddha's birth came fourth. Day, fourth day of the sixth month, July. Then we, all, we celebrated the first preaching of law. Number was, at, was the anniversaries of Buddha miraculous descent from heaven. The twin, the second next birth, um, the tenth, we celebrate the feast of the lambs on the twenty fifth day. The the next religious events of the year, we on the ninety twenty ninth to thirtieth of the twelfth month, which is a jun of January and February, according to the Western calendar. At, the at this time, we had exploration of the audience ready for the new. Our calendar is indeed very different from Westerns. We use a 60 year cycle. Each year is indicated by 12 animals and the in and five elements in various combinations. The new year is in February. Here is the year calendar for present cycle, which started in 1927. Wait, they predicted 1927? It looks like they have very good prediction. This would be even before 1920, like, even, like a long time before 1927, and they already got it all noted. That means they have, must have excellent prediction. 1927, the eel of the fire here. 1928. The Eel of the Earth Dragon, 1929. The Eel of the Earth Serpent, 1930. The Eel of the Ivan Horse, 1931. The Eel of the Ivan Sheep, 1932. The Eel of the Water Ape, 19, uh, the 1933, the year of the waterbed. 1934, the year of the wood dog. 1935, the year of the wood hawk. 1936, the year of the fire mouse. 1937, the year of the fire ox. 1938, the ear of the earth tiger. 1939, the ear of the earth hill. 1940, the ear of the Ivan dragon. 1941, the ear of the Ivan serpent. 1942, the ear of the water horse. 1943, the eel of the water sheep. 1944, eel of the wood egg. 1945, the eel of the wood bird. 1946, the eel of the fire dog. 1947, the eel of the fire hog. Um, 1948, the eel of the earth mouse. 1949, the year of the Earth Hawks. 1940, 50, year of the Ivan Hale. 19, Tiger. 1951, the year of the Ivan Hale. 1952, the year of the Water Dragon. 1953, 
1953, the year of the water serpent. 1945, 54, the year of the wood horse. 1955, the year of the wood sheep. 1956, the year of the wood ape. 1957, the year of the firebird. 1958, the year of the earth dog. 1959, the year of the word hog. 1960, the year of the iron mouse. 1961, the year of the iron ox. All the way to the end. And so on. Okay, I can't read it. It is part of a belief that the probabilities of the future can be foretold to us divinization by whatever that means is a science is a science and is I can't read this all because I don't can't read Tibetan, but okay. Accurate, we believe in astrology. To us, astrological influences all but cosmic ways which are colored or outweighed by the nature of body reflecting them to earth. Anyone will agree that one can have a camera and a white fight and take picture of something by putting various filters all over the camera lens, all over the light we can arrange for special effects on finished photo graph. We can get a all. We can get a whole a panoramic or infrared effects. To mention three out of a large number, people are affected in a similar way by cosmic radiation, impinging impinging upon their own chemical electrical personality. Buddha says, stargazing and astrology, forecasting lucky all, all in fortunate events by science, pro concentrating good or ego, all these things are forbidden. But a later degree in one of our sacred books says, the power given to few by nature, for which that individual endures pain and suffering, they may be used. No physic power would be used for personal gain by worldly ambition as proof of reality of such powers. Only thus can those be gifted, be protected. My attainment of the third eye had been painful and increased its power, which I had been born. But later chapter, we all return to the opening of the third eye. Here's a good place to mention more astrology. The quite quote, the quotes, the names of three eminent Englishmen who have seen on astrological prophecies that came true. It looks like they now are saying about the predictions they made. Who have seen an astrological prophecy came true. In 1027, since 1027, century 1027, Ooh, I can't tell it, I just don't understand that. But continue. All major, major decisions in Tibet have been taken with the aid of astrology. The invasion of my country by the British is 194, was accurately foretold on the page. One and one hundred and nine is a reproduction of the actual project prophecy 
in Tibetan language. It reads in the ear of the wood dragon. The first part of the ear protects the Dalai Lama. After, fight, after that, fighting and quarreling robbers come forward. There are many enemies. Troublous grief by weapons will arise and the people will fight. At the end of the year, consularity speaker will end the war. Masters, one moment. I really need to plug my computer before it stops. Let me continue. In the eel, um, I think we want to. Weapons will arise and people will fight. At the end of the year, consecrity and speaker will end the war. The, that was within the year before 1850 and concerns the year 1904, the, the wood dragon war. Colonel Young Husbands was in charge of the British forces. He saw the prediction at Lhasa. I, a Mr. La Weddell was also a British army. So the printed prediction in 19, in the year 1902, he, Mr. Charles Bell, who later went to Lhasa, also saw it. Some um, went with. Yeah. Um, let's stop some the thing because we can talk. Okay, uh, okay, thank you, Makun. Um, let's stop here and then let's do question time. Okay. Uh, you can stop recording. Okay. You must have